For the last 10 years in my practice, I've been using the super screw expander. And the reason I've been using this particular expander, it's much easier for the parent to turn. Being a heavy bodied expander, you don't get as much tipping. And I would recommend people to visit their website, uh, superscrewsuperspring.com. It was developed by a colleague of mine who was the previous chairman of orthodontics at Loyola Institute. Um, and uh, it's Dr. Lewis Clapper. And uh, Lewis had tried various expanders and found uh, shortcomings in, in the standard uh, pin and tube system. So he came up with his own. So I'm gonna go through now how we cement one of these and what post-operative instructions I give to the parent. Um, when you get your first super screw expander back, you'll get one sheet of instructions, which are for the doctor, which explains to you how many turns equate to the millimeters and also run through the maximum opening cycle etc and then the bottom part of that form is what you tear off and give to your patient or parent and in this form two important things one showing them how to turn the key and telling them how often to turn and the other warning them that once they reach the maximum number of lines, five lines, they should stop, otherwise the screw will open upon itself. For most of my patients, I want them to reach line three before I do a review. And this is a great way of the parent actually checking if they're turning the appliance properly. Whereas the previous expanders, the doctor has to measure the expansion based on the uh, intermolar distance, um, etc. So the appliance, called a super screw. It comes with a Allen key and this key is what I demonstrate to the parent on how to turn the gear. Now one little tip that I will give you before we go through cementation process is that most parents when they try and engage this won't be able to engage it like the diagram will show. So the patient's diagram explains that it should go in and touch the upper incisor. That's sometimes very difficult to do because of the angulation. So most parents actually start halfway in the cycle, which means they will turn it and then they need to turn it around and turn it again. And they'll think that's two turns, but really that is one turn done in two increments. And we'll demonstrate that uh, clinically for you. Now, to cement this appliance, we use two different adhesives. Um, you can see that's the super screw, but this design is my design. This is a design that I've placed rests so that when we expand and the pallet remodels, there's less chance of these arms bearing into the pallet. If you don't have these rests, as you expand and the pallet remodels, this will start impinging on soft tissue. So, to bond the rests into position, we use standard uh, light cured composite resin. To cement the bands, we use the same material that we had uh, used in earlier footage, which is uh, 3M multi-band cement. Uh, so we'll run through the procedure. I, this is the appliance we're about to fit for our patient. We now use scanning technology, so that's a resin model that they've generated from a, a 3D scan. The appliance come back and the first thing I would like every person to do is to check that the screw is working properly. So we actually open this screw five lines and turn it back five lines so that we know it's functional. Second thing we do is we take out the separators that have been placed a week before and then we etch the deciduous D. Sometimes it might be the premolar, but in this case it's the D. We etch with our 37% phosphoric acid. We then bond with orthosolo. And then I like using this Ormco product, um, Enlight. It's a unidose. So the unidose capsule is placed in the gun. It's got good viscosity. So that is placed after the appliance is in. So we etch and use ortho solo. We then cement the appliance using our multi-band cement. And then the last component 
is the resin stops. Now the resin stops have two functions. Number one, they prevent the appliance from driving palletly. Number two, they form a bite plate effect, like a bike turbo, like a Schwartz appliance with occlusal coverage. They allow good expansion because the occlusion is not hitting and locking in the appliance. Now, to cement the appliance, again, this should come back from your lab already with the bands nicely um, etched or sandblasted. You do not need to etch the tooth surface. What you will do is go back to your um, Unitech kit and you have a measure here. What I find you need to cement one of these is one scoop of the three, one scoop of the one. The ratio is one to one. So one of those scoops flat, one of those scoops flat is the equivalent of four doses of powder. So four doses of the Unitech powder with then four drops of the liquid. So one flat scoop large, one flat scoop small, four drops of liquid mixed and then placed into the molar band then seated before you light cure you get a wet cotton roll and remove the excess and then using your LED technology light cure here and here and at the same time you're going to light cure your composite resin. And that is the cementation of the super screw. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, young Ellie. Say hi to the camera, Ellie. Hello. Right, do you know what you're getting done today? My expanders. Are you excited about that? Yeah. Great. How did you go with the separators? It hurt for a little bit, but now I barely feel it. Perfect. All right. So we're going to take those separators out today, clean your teeth, and then fit the expander. Okay. Um, so if I just talk a little bit about Elle's case, um, Ellie has a class 3 tendency but maxillary deficient. Uh, so she has no room for her maxillary canines and she's tending to have a crossbite on both sides. So we're using the Hyrax to develop the upper jaw and then we'll combine that Hyrax with 2x4 degainer mechanics so that we can get the laterals in and also start correcting part of the class 3 component. We're not using a face mask in this situation because of position of maxilla. Um, if maxilla was deficient, uh, we would use a bonded hyrax with a face mask. But here, it's a case we're using a banded hyrax um, with a two by four. Today, we're gonna to run through the fitting of that um, particular hyrax. So we don't normally use a NOLA retractor to fit one of these hyraxes, but because we're videotaping this, it's much better for the field of view. Um, remember, uh, we use NOLA tractors when isolation is crucial, such as putting brackets on. But when you're using multiband cement, a little bit of saliva does not here nor there. Um, and it makes it much harder to work in the mouth, right? So can you just bite together for me? Good girl. You can see um, the class 3 bite tendency here. You can see that large, fleshy uh, labial frenum. We don't do a phrenectomy until we've actually brought the four incisors together. Because if we do it early, the scar tissue that ensues um, prevents us from actually closing the diastema. So now we're removing the separators that have been in for one week. And then we're uh, going to pumice and clean the first permanent molar. From your field with you. So pumice, uh, and then we're going to etch the deciduous molar, the D.
So now we're trial fitting the uh, expander just to make sure we have a comfortable fit. Remember when we cement this it's very important to cover the opening of the molar tubes with um, chapstick uh, or with Vaseline because if any if that multiband cement gets into the molar tube and sets it's next to impossible to then put in your uh, arch wire. So that's a nice fit. We're now going to take that appliance out, alcohol wipe it. So this, um, we're placing that Vaseline uh, just on the uh, opening of the molar tube. Show exactly where we place it, just rather than just with the fingers or a probe. Yep, great. Anywhere you don't want extra cement to go in, which is going to affect your mechanism. So the actual screw mechanism and the opening to the molar tubes. Okay. Now well, the girl will start mixing the multiband cement. So we've already etched and rinsed the premolar region, and in this case the deciduous uh, molar. Once the cement has been placed on the molar bands, the appliance is seated, excess cement is wiped away with a cotton roll. To seat the appliance, uh, we use two instruments. One is an anterior band seater, and the other one is a posterior band stick. Uh, the anterior band seater is to engage the initial contact point between the uh, E and the 6, and then to fully seat the appliance, we ask the patient to bite on the posterior bite stick. So excess um, adhesive being wiped away. At this stage, the adhesive is still blue in colour. Once you like you and it sets, it goes to um, a clear tooth coloured material. At the same time, we're drying the etched enamel associated with the rest seats. Remember, the rest seat is slightly sitting off the tooth, leaving some space and material ready for the composite resin. We're adding the ortho solo now, which is the unfilled resin uh, for the um, rest seat. And we put this all around the tooth surface as well as the metal, because as we inject in light, we want to have a nice bond between the two. The micro brush is dipped in unfilled resin so that it doesn't stick to the composite and we take our time and mould that around the occlusal surface. We then light cure and check with our tick loading paper that we're hitting both sides evenly. Let me show two lights being used for the multi-band as well as the other. So, now the doctor and the nurse work together to light cure the GIC on the first molar and the composite on the deciduous molar. So this is a cementation process that involves standard composite bonding technique as well as glass ionomer uh, cementation. So we check that all the glue has set and then we will use a scaler just to remove any excess uh, adhesive that wasn't possible with the cotton roll. It's very important that doctor takes the time to remove excess adhesive around the gingival margins as that's a very hard area to clean and starts causing uh, gingival problems. This appliance may be in the mouth anywhere from four months to six months. 
Um, and the reason I have put O2 two tubes already on this appliance is because I can then use it while I'm doing my two by four. Many doctors realize that when they do their first expander, it comes back from the laboratory without the O2 two tubes. Then they realize they're gonna to have to lose some expansion as they do their strap up. Uh, with this technique, we are able to do a two by four bond up um, at the uh, following visit if there's been enough expansion. And we don't have wire emergencies because the wire from the two to the six can be supported by uh, molar tube extenders or by beg brackets being placed on the deciduous uh, molar, the E. So now we're going to make sure that we're hitting evenly. A, it's more comfortable for the patient, and B, if they are only hitting on one side, there's more chance of the composite debonding on that side. So tap, tap, tap. Feel like the left side and the right side are hitting at the same time? See the mold, but it's just, it's just, just on the front side again. So ideally, we'd like four points of contact to be even uh, the sixes and the deciduous teeth. In this situation, she's hitting on the sixes but not the deciduous teeth, so we're adding a little bit more composite resin to the uh, Ds. using ortho solo again and the N-Lite material. So by placing some unfilled resin or ortho solo uh, bond uh, over the composite, we then ask the patient to bite and basically she's going to bite herself into an even platform where all four teeth will contact simultaneously. Now the final light cure. Check once again with the articulating paper to make sure there's contact on all four sides. And I'm using a high speed handpiece with a diamond burr to do the final occlusal adjustment. Now we'll just go through the turning. So this is the spanner. There's two styles, a super screw, a large and small. Um, there's a gold key for the large and a green key for the small. We're using the green key here. So let's show the engagement of that. Yep. In an ideal world, um, you place your um, key, your Allen key, uh, onto the super screw and then you ask the patient to open, nice and wide, right? And you do one turn from incisor to incisor. Open really big. Great. And that is one turn. Now, that turn should be done once a day. If that turn is done once a day, that is the equivalent of one twelfth of a millimetre per turn. So effectively, um, you are doing six turns um, a week and... Um, the six turns a week, which translates then to one millimetre 
of expansion per fortnight. That's what we call semi-rapid expansion. And I find we get the best of both worlds. We get new bone formation. Uh, we get less discomfort for the patient. I used to do rapid expansion, where I would do two to three turns a day and split the suture. That's very uncomfortable for the patient, as well as uh, you have to wait six months, uh, three months minimum, six months maximum, for the bone to actually remodel. Um, whereas with this, as you're expanding, new bone is being created at the same time and it's stable expansion. So for many people who think that expansion is unstable, you'll probably find they've been doing rapid expansion and not maintaining it long enough. Semi-rapid expansion um, is a very, very stable procedure. In reality? Uh, now, in reality, uh, this young lady has a nice size palate and, and good position of incisors to do a proper turn, but many parents won't be able to do the first turn correctly. So what they do is this. Yeah. So we've just fitted Ellie's expander, and I'm just about to show mum, Anna, uh, how to do the turns. So I'm going to give you the instructions here. And what I'd like you to do is to do one turn a day. Um, and probably if it's getting uncomfortable doing one turn a day, you can slow down to one turn every second day. We start at a very slow rate. Sometimes when I see you in four weeks, I increase the turns. Um, so even though these are the basic instructions, they would vary child to child. Okay. Right. Before I show you actually in your daughter's mouth, what I'd like to do is show you on a, on a type of dot, on a model. Okay. Sounds good. So this is a demonstration appliance, um, and it's on top. in the top, yeah. And it's cemented in four places, on the back molars and on the tooth number four. So when you first turn it, the key has two entry levels. See, if it's like that, it's different to like this. It's facing upwards there, facing down with it. So what I want you to do is engage it towards the front teeth. Okay. So if I put it like that, and then once it's engaged, you give it a full turn down like that, and you'll be able to feel that, right? Yeah. If you can't engage it fully like this, you might need to turn it the other way. So what I'd like you to do before you try in your daughter's mouth is have a go here. So if you can just engage it first. I can hold that for you if you like. <laughs> That's good. Yep. Now can you feel that? Yeah. That's one full turn. Right? Now in the mouth, what will limit your full turn is two things. The lower teeth and Ellie maybe not opening as fully as she can. Right? Um, if that happens, then it's okay to do two half turns. So let's just do another example. If, if you go to place this appliance in the mouth and you can't get it there because the teeth are in the way, you can turn it around and then you're engaging here, but it's only a half turn. Okay. So then what you'll do is one half turn, turn it around and complete the other half turn. Okay? okay. So let's now take away the demonstration model and you can have a go in the mouth. Okay? okay. Great. Um, I find it's easier for you to do this while Ellie's lying in her bed. Many parents try and do it like this. A, they get a sore back, and B, you can't really see what you're doing. Yeah. It'd be nice to have one of these at home, but just lying in their bed with their chin up. So can you help us out here and put the chin up? Right. Yes. So if I can get you then to just um, not turn it, but just place it so that I can see you've got it in there. OK, that's in. Now just let it go for one second. Don't, don't turn just yet. OK. So what we're demonstrating to the parent here is that it is engaged. Many parents will place this and think they've engaged it and do this and think they've turned it, but in actual fact, um, they haven't engaged. So what I like, uh, now there's no way the child can swallow that. We've made the span of that particular size. Um, open nice and wide. So what I do is I actually get the parent to engage. Now can you see here, that's engaged, but it's not fully on that incisor. Yes. So that's one of those half turns I was talking about, right. right? If I turn it the other way and engage, now you can see it's touching the incisor. Yes. So can I get you to try and engage so it's also hitting the upper incisor? Yes. Perfect, okay, now let me just check. So I can check that's engaged because it's not falling out of the mouth. Now, can I ask you, do you help us out here, Ellie? Big open, okay, and one turn, perfect. Excellent. So that is one expand. How does that feel, not too bad? Okay, 
Right. Now, I'm going to go through some brushing with you. Uh, we're going to give you, um, for being so nice and coming in today, an uh, oral irrigator. We recommend one of these to clean. Uh, it's, um, it's called a water pick. And effectively, you fill this component up. I like uh, to use um, salt water. So one teaspoon of salt in a coffee mug, that sort of ratio. Uh, water as hot as you can bear without burning her mouth, right? And you mix it in there. Where it's very hard to clean with a toothbrush is here, and that's where a lot of plaque builds up, mm. um, and underneath these wires. So the three most common points that we get plaque built up, because they can't brush with a normal toothbrush, uh, is just there, where the band of the tooth is, mm -hmm. um, and under these wires. So after she's brushed her teeth, can I get you to help her with this, and just by squirting, you can clean there, and you'll see food come out, clean under there, and clean under there, all right? Now, if you can do that once a day, and she brushes three times a day, once in the morning, once after school, and once before going to bed, then that keeps everything like, looking really good, okay? So I always get um, uh, children to brush as soon as they get home, right? Yeah. So if they do it three times a day, but only use this once a day. Okay. Um, the older versions of these are used to attach to the shower. Uh, but the problem is it makes a mess, etc. These are a nice desktop model, so you just put them, um, the, the power is uh, you know, plugged in, and um, uh, you can then uh, use that. Oh, great. This is the super duper ultra model because it gives you the, um, the, the, the ability to not just um, have more force but different pulsating. Uh, actions. So it's really, really effective to clean. And I'd like her to use this also when I put those four braces on, because then she can clean underneath the wire. So I'll give you that. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Right. Okay, Ellie, I just wanted you to have a little rinse, just to get in that taste out of your mouth. Have a good rinse and spit out. Great. How does that feel in your mouth? Not too bad? A bit weird. Yeah, now you're going to talk a bit funny for a few days, you understand? So my staff at the front desk are going to give you some tongue twisters, right? For instance, can you try and say the word Mississippi right now? Mississippi? That's not bad, actually. 66? 66. Excellent. You will duck really well to that. So we're going to go through some tongue twisters with you, and then we're going to go through the brushing again. Yeah? Now, certain things you can't do with this in your mouth. Um, I don't want you to eat too many lollies, you understand? The worst lollies are like the gummy bears, the minties, the Mars bars, the hard sticky lollies, yeah? You can have soft chocolate and things like that and you brush straight away after that. But the biggest problem we have with these breaking is when kids eat things that are too hard. Does that all make sense? Good girl, thanks.